I'm here to give you a quick uh, walkthrough on the Vision One Endpoint Security platform. Uh, so we're just going to jump right in. So uh, the first thing I wanted to cover uh, is kind of uh, top of mind as far as you know what's new and exciting uh, with Vision One. Uh, some of you may have heard that we have consolidated the endpoint protection piece with the Vision One platform, uh, and we're going to jump into that right now under the endpoint security operations. Um, so this may look new to some folks that uh, haven't migrated over yet, um, but we are now um, we, we now have the ability to uh, essentially manage endpoints and uh, your you know your server workloads. You know, all in the um, the same um, dashboard here, right? So being able to uh, have visibility, having um, you know action uh, filters and uh, different filters as far as from a management perspective are all going to be available here. Uh, we also will have the ability to uh, run certain response actions from here as far as you know isolating endpoints, running custom scripts. Um, and if it's a single endpoint, we can actually do a, a remote shell as well. Uh, the other thing inside of the endpoint inventory um, is the agent installer. So you have the um, options of choosing the protection that suits the endpoint or the server machine, right? Which is really neat. Um, we have different uh, sensor settings um, as far as, you know, uh, how you want that telemetry data being fed into Vision One, um, and then also global settings for um, you know uh, removing inactive uh, sensors, uh, and your proxy settings uh, will be here as well. Uh, the policy management will be under the respective modules of so standard endpoint protection and server workload protection. So you'll still have that ability to you know go in and fine tune your uh, your policies. Um, you know, where, it's where your exceptions, exclusions, et cetera, will be, um, you know, set up. Now, as far as another piece on this um, is the user roles, right? So RBAC. Um, so we have um, <clears throat> moved to have some additional granularity as far as how we're, um, you know, allowing access to different parts of the platform. Right, and this can be from the traditional pieces or traditional modules that we had in Vision One, um, you know, and even going deeper into these individual modules um, to uh, determining what scope these users have uh, the ability to to see. Right, so what this means is if uh, if a user is only allowed access to a certain number of endpoints or a certain group uh, on the server and workload side. That's all they'll see, even from a telemetry perspective, um, even if they're running a search. So any of the modules based on this scope setting, they'll, you know, you'll be able to limit their visibility, um, which is which is pretty cool. Um, if we go back into um, some of the more established areas in the Vision One console, I just want to touch on real quickly while I have time. Um, so executive dashboard, right? High level overview of what the risk looks like in the environment. Uh, one of the call outs I wanted to make was a security configuration dashboard here. Um, you know, being able to get a quick look at key features that are adopted inside of the, um, you know, the, the different protection schemas, um, which is, you know, which is, like I said, a quick way to see where you're where you stand from a policy perspective. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to call out was the reporting, right? So there's a lot of questions around what, what kind of reporting can we run? So we have uh, a ton of different reports here. Um, you know, we're able to create uh, schedule scheduled reporting from here as well. Uh, so and the other thing to consider is that, you know, this is we have a, a pretty robust API stack um, that we can use. So if there's you know anything in Vision One, um, chances are we can get that data uh, from an API perspective as well, which is awesome. Uh, the other area real quickly that I wanted to touch on was the threat intelligence, right? So um, the intelligence reports, um, you know, we're still, uh, you know, we still have a bunch of um, different sources that we can use to run proactive scans in the environment to look for IOCs or um, you know, different uh, uh, notifiers based on the reporting that you have uh, selected, and then also based on any custom um, 
intelligence that you've you know connected as far as IOCs, taxi feeds, or MIST servers, um, we can integrate and we can run uh, against that data that we've collected. Uh, the last thing that I'll call out real quickly, um, I know um, you may have heard this a lot, but as far as our third party integration, I mean, if we're looking at it this, if we're looking at this as a you know platform, you know slash eco ecosystem type of perspective, um, you know it wouldn't be complete without calling out you know the integrations that we have with various security partners um, in the industry. Now, this is anything from identity access management, uh, different firewall uh, partners that we're working with to share suspicious object data, uh, to being able to integrate with different SIMs and SOARs, um, you know, to essentially try to make our customers' lives as easy as possible. 